is hey. Jamie. Hello, everybody. It's time to wind down. Time to wind down. And for me, it's really time to wind down because we are up north at the cottage, in case you can't tell. And as of the end of the show, we are officially on spring break. So it is really time to wind mm -hmm. down for me oh. today. So that's and it. I just got to Arizona last night, so I guess it's time to wind down, even though I have a ton of work that I've got to do, but I'll get to do it in the warm sunshine. Absolutely. Absolutely. So that's time to wind down. So it's been another busy week, as Absolutely. always. Absolutely. Packed with um, all kinds of great content and great things that we came up with. And so we're going to talk about two different things today. Tony found a great article that she wants to talk about, and then I got notified by a couple of my apps on something that started sparking some ideas. So tell us about the article you found. Well, it was so funny because you and I have been bouncing around ideas for today's show. Um, and we, we came up with a few, but there was nothing that was really grabbing me. And then about an hour ago, this article came in from Inc. Magazine, and it is the is Jeff Bezos' three-step formula for success. And I got so excited about it because it's things that we talk about and certainly as, as innovators, as business owners, that, that these three simple steps apply to all of us, whether we are Jeff Bezos or whether we're just us. So I thought I would share those and, and, and just, you know, maybe we can get some comments from the people who are here listening. I would love to have you. Well, perhaps before we start, if you're listening, can yes. you just just throw a comment down saying I'm here from wherever yeah, we can get? Where are you tuning in from? We love yeah. to know where you're tuning in from. Hello, Ellen. Ellen. Ellen, so faithful. Let us know where are you tuning in from, and if you share this broadcast with your friends with your network because it's awesome to spread the spread the love and absolutely get people in here chatting with us. So. So his step number one is surround yourself with the right people. And, and I will say about all three of these, ex except for maybe one of them, um, that there are things we say all the time, but I think sometimes we say them so often, we right. don't sit down and really think about what they mean, about what it means to surround yourself with the right people. So for example, in our business, we, well, we surround ourselves with you. We surround <laughs> ourselves with you and your team. And by the way, Congratulations, Miss Top 50 Social Media Blog. Yeah, that Isn't was that not awesome. That was really nice. When you get an email from someone saying we've mentioned your blog and as one of the top social media sites, it was like, oh, all my hard work, it was more than Google listening. Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. So surround yourself with the right people can mean the people who know how to do things you don't know how to do. I always say surround yourself with people who are much smarter than you are, who know how to do the things you don't know how to do. But even more than that, surround yourself with the right people for me means the people who will push you. So that is the key. Has, it can't be just a bunch of yes people no. that say, you're awesome, you're the best. Yeah. It really has to be someone that sharpens you and pushes you. Yeah, because it, as business owners, we are more often than not the top of the food chain. Like, right. We're it. And there's a reason it's our business. It, it's because we had the idea, we have the knowledge or whatever. And so surrounding ourselves with the obvious people, the accountants, the lawyers, the social media experts. But you, for example, come into both of those categories. You do push Jer and I. Jer, I'm so thankful to have Jer, pushes me and, and doesn't let me settle. But in terms of the clients we choose, surround yourself with the right clients, surround yourself with the right suppliers, surround yourself with the right mastermind group or the right mentors or advisors that you go to. I think that's so important. People who will push you. And even if you're an innovator and you're the one that's supposed to be coming up with all the great ideas, you need people who will push you past what you believe is already exceptional. Or right? people, make sense? That will say, people that will give you another opinion on your ideas because sometimes, I mean, I come up with tons of ideas and Kirk is always really good at being my sounding board and and he'll admit I'm always calling him my wet blanket because I'm like oh that was such a good idea yeah. that does sound like a wet blanket S just snuffed out my candle yeah. um, but but he's the voice of reason 
And sometimes I just want someone to go, rah, 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 great idea. So you have to be able to put all those people around you, which right now we're surrounded by awesome people. Yes. Patrick. Yes, Patrick, that means me. He says, that means me. I'm the right people. Hey, Patrick and Christopher from North, from uh, Fredonia. Fredonia, I don't even know where that is, New York. Um, and Paul, shout out to you, Paul in Colorado. Sarah's here from California. Yeah, it's like we surround ourselves, even on our online communities, by people who encourage, who give ideas, who share. Um, shout out to all of you guys. And, and who call us on our shit. Like, oh, I said shit again. Oh, now I said it twice <laughs> to say that I said it. Oh, Facebook's okay. going to shut us down. Yeah. Um, a lovely, lovely young woman on your team, Trey, um, who called me out on something a couple of weeks ago, just told me it like it was. And, and it's refreshing. It's refreshing. So that's number one. Surround yourself with the right people. Number love two, it. and I love this, is have a learn it all mindset. And that's just to remind ourselves that no matter who we are, no matter how much we know, we never know it all. And Jeff talks about adopting a student's mentality in which you rethink everything around you. This is the key phrase from the ground up. You rethink everything around you from the ground up. And how many times do we not rethink from the ground up? We rethink from where we are, right? right? You know, we rethink from where we are. Oh, we're here. So let's rethink about what the next step is. But what Jeff is constantly doing is looking at how do you, I, I don't know if any of you read his stuff, but he talks about day one. It's as if every day was day one in his business. And how often do you rethink things from the ground up? And rethinking things from the ground up is not easy, as we can attest to with the launch of our new website, which we did rethink from the ground up. So the question, I guess, for us is looking at our businesses and going, if we were starting today, right? this is day one of our business, what, what would, would we do differently? What would we rebuild from the from the ground up? Yeah, which um, we've been talking about that recently. And I don't know what got me in. I think it was during my monk time when I was here by myself. Um, yeah. talking I was having monk time and I was just rethinking everything and saying, okay, what is it I want to be doing and what do I want to do this year? And trying to come to, to just wipe the slate clean and say, if I were to start this business today, brand new, not bringing baggage, what would I do different? And that's, it's a hard thing to even comprehend. So I think that's really interesting for Jeff to be doing at such a huge scale of a business to be looking at. And that's why they're getting into these areas that are brand new to them. I mean, well, they're going to gonna compete with UPS and, and uh, FedEx now. And, so, and the, this article came out because there was a big announcement today about, about Amazon and a couple of other companies teaming up to provide health care for, for their employees. So it really is, I mean, it's amazing. Right. Excuse me. And the phrase he uses is you don't want to be a know it all. You want it. You want to be a learn it all. And I just thought that was so cool. And of course, that also refers to how often we read. Um, what are we reading? Surround yourself with the right people. Surround yourself with the right people everywhere. What are you reading? Who are you talking to? Who are you watching? Who are you listening to the podcast? And, and who are you reading? That's all part of that. And then this third one, Gina, is really, and, and I, you know that I've been saying this for years, and we've been talking a lot about it lately, which is be ready to play the long game. Be right. ready to play the long game. Do not sacrifice long-term value for short-term gain. And so many of us do this. And I think a couple of weeks ago, we were talking about the speed economy we live in, or maybe it was in, in the Facebook group, and how everything needs to be done so quickly. Yeah. But, but in doing that, sometimes I believe that we are sacrificing long-term value for short-term gain. We're getting, we're getting stuff out there. And even this recent survey I mentioned a couple of weeks ago, this innovation survey where CEOs around the world are saying, you know what? Lowest minimum viable product, maybe not so much anymore. Maybe we need to take just a little longer to get things right. So right. it's all about the long game and what are you doing now to invest in that long game and, and giving yourself permission not to stall, but to say, okay, I'm, I'm working on this value and I'm doing it for the long, for the long term. Just like uh, many of us, I don't know what your investment policy is, but you know, most of our investments are in long term. 
We're, right. we're in there for the long haul. So surround yourself with the right people. Be a learn it all and uh, play the play the long game. And and I just think those. I got so excited when I, 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 for those who are listening, I, I texted Gina right away and I said, scratch everything I was going to say. Everything. This is, I'm changing everything. This is what I want to talk about. And if those three things were posted on our wall, how cool would that be? Yeah. So exciting. Such a good reminder of all of us, for all of us. And it was interesting because one of the guys I interviewed, um, Jeremiah Owen, who's the CEO of Vivax Pros, and he, one of his tips, I said, what would you give yourself advice to your younger self. And he said, remind myself that you're in it for the, the long game. And he said, you know, it's that thing of as entrepreneurs, sometimes we try something and a couple months later, we're like, oh, I don't think it's working. And we have to look long term more so than I think we want to do because because everything's moving so fast. I think we are um, impatient. Yes. We're, and we're and I and I think this this speed world has trained us to want immediate gratification, instant right. gratification. And I was thinking about my week today, um, before, even before I got this, but I just think this goes so well with it. And I was trying to come up with a phrase that um, that described the week that that Jer and I just had. And the words that came to my mind were, "It's okay. It's okay. okay. It's okay not to have all the answers all the time." It's okay to not get immediate results of your investment. You know, when you when you launch something or do something and you want, it's okay to have weeks where the phone didn't ring. Right. Because you'll have weeks where it did. Right. Um, and, and I think that that's a really important phrase for us. And it fits so well with, with, with this approach from Jeff Bezos is it, it's okay when you were playing for the long run, when you were playing the long game, not every day and not every week will be uh, don't be what you want it to be. You won't be on that top wave. I mean, I always look at the waves in our business and there are weeks that you go, there must be something wrong with my computer because yes. nobody is replying to anything I've, I've posted. Like yeah. I think my computer's broken. Obviously it's broken. And then the next week it's like you have everybody. And you know, so it's one of those things, which is what I thought of when I, when they sent me that thing saying, you're one of the top 50 social media blogs in the world. First I was kind of laughing because I was like, I mean, I could come up with a list and say that, but it was an honor because some of these blogs are really, well, all of them are amazing blogs. Um, but I laugh because I thought there are weeks when I write a blog post and I think, I don't think anybody's reading it. Crickets. And I always say, you know what? I write these blog posts. If one person reads it, I'm excited. Yes. And, you know, we can't be in it for the instant gratification, the instant success and, and applause. We have to be in it for the long haul, the long game. So I think that's such a good lesson. Which which leads me to another point, which we've realized lately is we have been trained that we believe if somebody sees something, they will acknowledge it. They will like it. They will love it. Now on Facebook, you've got like 186 different things you can do to express emotion. But I think what we forget is that more and more now people see things and don't comment. Right. And don't acknowledge because they're lurking. They're, they're lurking, but they're working, right? And Tony's they're not there to like, to like, and sometimes Tony's they- Tony's nicer. Tony's nicer. She, for all of you lurking right now, she's, she knows you're working. I'm thinking you're just lurking. Comment in here. Let us know you're here. Hi, Sarah. Hey, Jim. Hey, Bob. <laughs> yeah. And so people don't necessarily do that. And this week, in fact, today we got, we got an email from a client. Um, from about three years ago, who told us that, that, you know, we had inspired him and their team had done something and for a trade show and they had people lined up around the block. And then he said, and oh, by the way, I love, I love Touchpoint Tuesdays. It's great content. Now this guy has never commented on a Touchpoint Tuesday, never liked a video, never done anything, but people are watching and we need to remember that it's okay when you're in it for the long game, that not everybody is commenting and loving and, and all that kind of stuff. And so speaking of loving and, and, and showing some love and sharing some love, you, you've been thinking about how to acknowledge your customers, yeah. your clients in an unusual yeah. and innovative way. <laughs> yeah. I mean, here's what started it. I actually was told by one of my apps that they were no longer um, going to be in touch with me. Um, and it's always sad when it's your fitness app saying, um, <laughs> <laughs> it was <laughs> no lie. 
My Pal is an app that I have on my phone, and I, I, you know, okay, I'm a slacker. And My Fitness Pal, I haven't logged into it in forever. And they actually sent me a notification that says, "Do you still want to get our notifications? Um, it doesn't look like you've logged in for a while. We can turn it off." And I was like, oh, "My Fitness app is leaving me." Um, and then, you were fired. I was fired by my Fitness app. Sad is that? That's hysterical. That is. But then I started thinking it's kind of interesting. Now, Kirk, my husband is a big, a huge reader. And this year, because he has a longer commute, he's challenged himself, well, last year, to do 50 books in a year. But he has a, you know, he has an almost an hour commute every morning and every afternoon. So he does audibles. So I, I was like, all right, I'm going to step it up. I need to listen to a book a week. And um, so on these long drives, especially, like I went through three books yesterday just driving from Denver to Phoenix. And um, it, in when I downloaded these books on Audible, I noticed that I got a badge. So I don't even know if any of you are Audible listeners, if you knew that you had badges, like I have the Marathon badge, the Stack badge, the Night Owl badge, the Seven Day Stretch badge. There were all these badges that I had won, which got me thinking of milestones. And even though this is a whole gamification piece um, that these apps do to keep you engaged, I started thinking, do we use milestones to celebrate? I mean, in our life, we, we celebrate milestones, birthdays, anniversaries, um, weddings, baby showers, whatever. Lately, that's all I've been doing. But I thought it was interesting. It got me thinking. And there's a um, an example of John Deere. They started having trouble with their turnover, and they weren't keeping their new hires very long. And if you think about most new hires, um, you know, most people show up to the job. They were showing their cubicle and... There's your yeah. computer, and there you go. Yeah. Um, this this story was interesting because they they realized the experience for a new hire was so bad that they implemented a program that celebrated this milestone. And it started as soon as they accepted the offer letter, they got an email from a team uh, from a friend at John Deere, and that friend introduced herself. She had her picture and said, "I'll be meeting you at the door. Here's where to park. Here's what to wear to feel most comfortable here." Um, then that team member met him at the door. They showed him their desk. Actually, even on the um, board in the lobby there was a welcome message for them at their desk they had this big banner that was taller than the cubicle so that people would know this was a new hire and they'd stop by the whole day there was a gift on their desk of one of the tractors and they had a, a, a um, like a, a big tractor or just a little? yeah just a little a little model tractor and then there was a screensaver that said you are about to do your or welcome to you the most important work you'll ever do but what it did was it set the tone for you belong here and you're about to do great work here. And I thought, what a powerful message, number one, within our team to welcome people and let them know the purpose that you have so that they know they're about to do important work and they feel that they belong. Which one of the books I listened to on my way here was Brene's, Brene Brown's. Uh, Braving the Wilderness. Oh my gosh, that's such a good book. Um, and she talked about belonging too. So that was interesting. But um, I thought, started thinking, well, what if when we had a new customer, they got a, a video message from us, or if, you know, especially if we don't get to see them face to face, what if they got a t shirt that said, welcome to whatever? I mean, I started thinking of all these ideas of fun ways to cr create milestones. And then I started thinking in our business, what if it was, did you know you just published your 50th blog post? Your brilliance yeah. is coming out to the world. What if, you know, what if we thought of ways to celebrate our customers' milestones in what we do with them? How cool would that be? So, uh, so Tony, you'll be getting some fun swag soon. So, okay. um, <laughs> that's cool. That's I mean, cool. really, it got my brain churning of going, because what does that do for us as a customer and as a team member? Number one, we feel like we're part of something. And we're not just in it alone. And then it, you know, it just kind of keeps us uh, motivated. Maybe like these apps, like my fitness app, I'm going to have to work out and log in. So my yeah. app doesn't kick me out. Um, like what milestones do you think? I mean, do you celebrate any milestones in your business even? Well, you've got me thinking now because the first thing I thought of when you started to talk about milestones was, as a speaker, and in fact, Jer has suggested this, and of course, I've never done it, uh, <laughs> but, um, which is, you know, it's been six months or it's been a year. 
since we work with your team. We're mm -hmm. just checking in to see how things go, or things are going and that kind of stuff. But right. now you've got me thinking it's more about their milestones. Their, their milestones. Right. Their milestones. Or you can do like my fitness app and send them a thing saying you haven't contacted me in a year. <laughs> Would you like us to fire you? <laughs> you slacker you. That's what I felt like my app was saying. Yes, uh, essentially. Yeah. Hey, but I think it's hey, a great idea. Nice to see you, VJ. Um, and, and I think and, it's a great idea. And, and we need, to, like, for someone like you, where you do a lot of longer term work with right. people. Um, I need to now think about, I mean, we do, you know, about half of our, our work is consulting, so that that's great. But for the speaking part, it would be really neat to yeah. figure out. The well, welcome well, idea is great. And that's we, what we I talk, like. Yeah. The speaking side, I think a cool welcome and to connect them long term. If you do work with a client one time, what if there was a welcome thing and a we're excited after we speak to touch base to, for these Milestone yes. checkpoints yes. um, that keep you in front of them could be something that's really cool. I'm curious yeah. if anyone else listening, if you've got ideas. Um, Ellen says, I started a project that I thought would be finished in six years. When I realized it was becoming a life project, I was not happy. I had to put so many ideas aside. The long-term demands commitment. That That is interesting um, when you look at it that way. If you looked at it as um, a job you were on, you could have these checkpoint milestones, but that is interesting. You thought it would be six years, and it turns out it's a lifetime project. Yeah, and the way the way I would see that, Ellen, because I know a little bit about your story too, is that yes, it requires commitment, but I think that's the universe telling you that that's the work you're here to do. You're here to do. Yeah, and that's what you're here to do. And and so yes, sometimes we have to put other ideas aside. Uh, Many of you have heard me talk about being fanatically focused. Once you know what you do, stay fanatically focused on on what you're here to do, and that's that's what the universe uh, was telling you, Ellen, was to stay fanatically focused on your brilliant gifts that you bring to the world. But well, that does require putting ideas aside. I think Gina, wasn't it uh, Steve Jobs who said it's not about that? I don't want to talk about the ideas we said yes to. I want to talk about the ones we said no to. Yeah, yeah, right? that's uh, yeah, right. You know, and milestones, when I think of milestones, today with social media, we have the ability to stalk people. <laughs> I could find out someone's birthday. I could find out their, um, you know, that somebody got married. I, there's things I can now see in yes. social media that I couldn't before. And we were talking about, you know, the different things that you could, different milestones that people celebrate. I mean, why don't, when we buy a house, why don't we get a note from our, our bank? Celebrating the fact that we purchased a home. Um, yeah. This is a huge investment and they do nothing. Your realtor gives you a gift and the bank that has all the money from you does nothing. Does and nothing. I thought, Gosh, what a missed opportunity from an organization, from an industry that wants to get more intimate with their customers and yet they miss huge milestones like that. Um, and I think if we go through starting from scratch in our businesses, we can identify what are the touch points that we could celebrate. That we might take a little bit of work. Well, what's interesting about the John Deere story is they rolled that out with huge success, so much so that people who were already working there said, I want to quit and come back and start new because I want that kind of entry. And then they said the turnover rate started to drop, but it didn't roll out worldwide because it took so much effort that somebody yeah. had to say, I will take this on in our area and I'll do the extra work involved. And people didn't step up to do it so that says touch points are um, a commitment you know touch points take effort time and what have you that most well, people don't want to do certainly certainly creating experiences at those touch points takes an investment of time and money but it, it is also what what makes the difference and and milestones you've just i guess reminded me milestones are touch points and so here's an example that we've talked about recently is linkedin and most of our clients are on linkedin and um you know how you get a little reminder that or a, an announcement that somebody has uh you know been at their job or anniversary and there is nothing that drives me nuts more than getting a note from someone I don't know and who I know doesn't know me. And on top of it all, it's a cut and paste note. It's the one that LinkedIn has already come up with oh, saying, yeah. congratulations on your anniversary. But what Jared and I have been talking about doing, and again, takes a little more time and commitment. And we've started to do this a few times already, 
is that when somebody who's either a past client or who we want to be a client gets an important milestone like that, then we acknowledge it by snail mail, or even better, we had a past client recently who got who, who was promoted to president, and we sent a basket uh, to congratulate them. So while everybody else, it's the it's the same old thing: is what is everybody else doing? Because right. it's easy, right. and what can you do that yeah. might take a little more effort? So right. I love that whole concept of milestones. I think I, yeah. I think that's great. And I think on LinkedIn, I wrote a blog post about this, of how we can use those annoying notifications as an opportunity to touch base with someone, but you have to do it genuinely. Like you have yes. to take the time to either by hand or by writing a note. Don um, Mahoney in our DIY social group this week was asking like, besides handwritten note, if somebody had really bad handwriting, what are other options? And I was saying, I love, I use an app, I don't even know if it's still called Postagram, but it's ink, um, ink cards, but it's where you can take a photo with your phone and it turns it into a real postcard and it sends it, but they type the message for you. So you don't yeah. have to handwrite. But for like a dollar for 99 cents, you get the, it comes as a real shiny thick postcard and they can pop the picture out and it has your message. And I thought even something like that with a really cool picture of something personalized for them, it's when you try to automate it that I think you lose. Um, yes. You lose all of the, yeah, but yeah, Find ways, whether it's because that's why the send out cards. I know a lot of people do send out cards, and I know those are personalized because you're putting the message in there and choosing the card. I don't know why that one still doesn't seem as genuine, but I I do like those. But there's other things I like. I like this um, postagram, and then I also um, have now got hooked on Sugar Wish. And they send candy to people. <laughs> so I'm totally a sugar pusher because I love this idea. And it's two women in Denver. I'm going to interview them um, coming up. And they started this company called Sugar Wish. And it's amazing. Um, so check them out. Yeah. Yeah. But I but I think the thing is just do what others aren't doing. Right. And, and I'm with you on the send out. I mean, if anybody listening does send out, use the send out cards. I'm not, I'm not bashing them. But there's... There's right. something for me that nah, doesn't meet the mark in, in sendo cards. I, I don't know what it is. Well, but there's because so many people are doing it. I think it's so many people are doing it. It's no longer unique. When it first came out, I was like, wow, this is so cool. Now, yes, yeah. so people. Yeah, too many people are doing it and too many people are doing it. Almost trying to automate it, right? So that it we actually got a sendo card once from one of our suppliers in the States. Uh, not you, um, who sent us uh, a happy Thanksgiving for American Thanksgiving. For American Thanksgiving, yeah. Well, sorry, you missed the boat on that one. You missed the it, boat on that one, yeah. And, and, oh, and if you really funny. wanted to make an impression, send us something for Canadian Thanksgiving. That would have really made an impression, but. Right. Or yeah. send something out of the blue, like just thinking of you type thing. You know, it's like. I think it's that out of the ordinary um, and then celebrating the milestones though. I think we can do that if it's in a, in a unique way. Yeah. Hitting the button to just send the LinkedIn message you lose. But when you take that notification as a good prompt and an opportunity to say, you know what? I haven't touched base with them in a long time and send a personal message to them and let them know you were thinking of them when you saw that. It's like, you know what? That made me realize I hadn't touched base with you in a long time. I hope things are going well. Yeah. That would stand out. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that this whole, oh, you've got me so, I'm, I can barely talk because my mind's going 100 miles an hour with That's this milestone right. thing. But, um, but it, it goes back to playing the long, the long game. Right. right? right. Uh, we want to touch base with people perhaps uh, once quarter or something like that. And then we go, well, you know, we sent them something and uh, we just sent something to a few people recently. And, and two of the three of them didn't even acknowledge that they got it. Uh, but when you're playing it for the long game, now this, you know, I, I think it would be, have been nice. It wasn't a small little thing. I think it would have been nice to acknowledge it. But when you're playing the long game, you have, it's just like nobody liking or loving your post. You got to go, okay. It doesn't mean you shouldn't do it again. That's and it doesn't they, mean they didn't see it. Yeah. yeah. It doesn't mean they didn't see it. They were not lurking. They were working. They were working. I love that. They weren't lurking. They were, <laughs> I always call them twatchers. The twatchers yeah. are out there on Twitter. They just watch. I know you have to be careful. You're yeah, just, that sounds a little rude, but. <laughs> well. Again, 30 minutes, how does it fly by this fast? I don't know. I don't know. 
we would love to hear if you're watching the replay or even if you're here live and all of a sudden your brain is is going with all these ideas we'd love for you to keep commenting i want to hear some really creative milestone and touch point ideas that we can yeah. celebrate um with our team or our clients i think that's a and really i will i will put the link to that article the jeff yeah. Bezos article uh in the feed for people okay. for people who want to i'll go do that right now as soon as as soon as we hang up really? so i um i hope that everybody i see bob was there bob yeah. is just just so loyal i've been trying if anybody watches the program i've been trying to focus on the camera um and that way but i can't see all the lovely people and the lovely comments that are coming in so i, know, I, I every once in a while you'll see i'll look down at the comments to pull these up um but your tell, tell us how we can join your group tony oh yes influential innovators um it's uh, on facebook just look for influential innovators and as i said we are on spread and bake break next week and the only thing so the only thing i'm doing next week is wind down so i will be here for wind down so influential innovators and your group, Gina, is? DIY Social. So on Facebook, just go to search DIY Social and join our groups because this is where the conversations continue. Absolutely. This is where they start often and where they continue. And you know, so every good conversations yeah. should start with a glass of wine. Absolutely. Time to wind down. I hope everybody's winding down for the weekend. And we will see you, if not in our groups, we will see you next Friday. Next Friday. Bye.